most basic level, your body is made up of energy. That energy organizes itself into the physical embodiment that you see in the mirror every day. But before it does this, it organizes itself into chakras and meridians. These chakras are essentially centers of energy that lie along these body ley lines, so to speak. Each one has a very specific purpose. Each one has a very specific vibration. They are manifestations of prana, otherwise known as life force energy. The chakras look a bit like funnels of energy, or vortices. They both absorb and emit energy. When a chakra is out of alignment, meaning it's not letting life force in, or is out of alignment for any number of reasons, it starts to affect your equilibrium. When chakras are out of alignment, they appear small and do not absorb or emit much energy. They also change in their color, patterning, texture, and sound. The root chakra, also known as Muladhara, is located roughly around your pelvic floor at the base of your spine. It is the first chakra of the energy system related to your physical body. It's associated with the element of earth and also the color red. The root chakra governs the parasympathetic nervous system, legs, feet, spine, bones, blood, sciatic nerves, colon, as well as most of the male sexual organs and some of the female sexual organs. It also plays a key role in the health of your adrenal glands, bladder, hips, and teeth. Ailments involving any of these bodily systems suggest an out-of-alignment root chakra. Because survival for a physical human is tied so closely to the relationship between personal power and our need for other people in human relationships, there is considerable overlap between the root and sacral chakras, especially in terms of the parts of the body they govern. The root chakra is your survival chakra. Its primary concern is needs. Now these needs go from all the way from your most primitive needs your most basic needs, to your most complex and developed needs. They go all the way from physical needs, things like shelter, food, and water, air, to non-physical needs, things like understanding, empathy, closeness, significance. Security is the primary concern for this chakra or this area of your energy centers, as is stability. And this chakra is what people are referring to when they're talking about grounding. The root chakra is related to your sense of safety, trust, belonging, courage, instinct, primal energy, resourcefulness, the now, generational patterns, and tribe, both positive and negative. What causes this chakra to go out of alignment is when your sense of safety and trust within the universe is threatened. Now obviously, if you've been watching any of my videos, you understand that the primary trauma that causes this is when your best interests are not, in fact, taken as a part of other people's best interests. There's no way to feel safe when that doesn't occur. It's also threatened when your sense of belonging within a social group is threatened, most especially in childhood. The way to imagine how this chakra functions is to imagine that at conception and then implantation, we take root in our physical life, and then we remain rooted throughout the course of our life. If at any point in this process, something interferes with our desire to stay rooted, or the feeling that we can stay rooted, then obviously our root chakra becomes out of alignment. Some things that may cause this unrooting process is our most basic physical or emotional needs being inconsistently met or not met at all, our sense of belonging in the world or with our family being threatened, our best interests not being considered, or feeling or being unsafe in any situation. What's important to understand is that this chakra pulls in energy from the earth and also emits energy downward towards the earth. It's this rooting process. Now, anytime this chakra begins to close, we begin to unroot. When this occurs, we feel disconnected to the physical and to other people, ungrounded, lost, disillusioned, like we don't belong, deeply unsafe, insecure, distrustful, unmotivated, depleted, aggressive, defensive, stuck, weak or frail, stagnant, desperately lonely, pessimistic, not focused, disorganized, compromised, anxiety or panic, depression, lack of abundance or scarcity, resentment, disinterest, post-traumatic stress, and nightmares. It is only when we have our needs met that we can focus on growing or evolving. This is one of the reasons why you see most of the evolution on the planet occurring in cultures that are not primarily focused on survival. If that sense of safety and security is not met, we don't expand. 
The reason I say this is that an out-of-alignment root chakra prohibits our growth immensely. It also forces all the other chakras in the system to overcompensate. Because the root chakra, perhaps more than any of the other ones, is the most closely linked to your physical time-space reality, it is the most rooted in a sense of time. This means it is the chakra that is the most affected by lineage. That's intergenerational trauma, if you'd like it put another way. Also, if it's out of alignment, that suggests that some element of trauma took place in your own personal timeline, most specifically, your childhood experience. To be entirely honest with you, the root chakra is the chakra that is the most out of alignment in people who identify themselves as spiritual. I'm going to go a step further. If you take a snapshot of the world today, almost no one on earth has an in alignment or healthy root chakra. But there are shades of gray in terms of this dysfunction inherent in the root chakra. And I'm going to tell you about some of these shades of gray. I have never, in all of my years, shaken hands with a Caucasian individual, that's the white race, that has an in-alignment root chakra. In fact, this race is the race of humans that has the most out-of-alignment root chakra of all. To the contrary, it is the black race, this is African-American and African cultures, that have the most in-alignment root chakras of all. They share this distinction with the native tribes of the world. Contrary to popular opinion, you need to do away with the concept that the way to bring the energy system into balance is through diminishment. There is a concept that it's possible for chakras to be too open. So what you're striving for is some sort of arbitrary balance of not too open and not too closed. This couldn't be any further from the truth. It's not possible for a chakra to be too open. If all of the chakras are as open as they possibly can be, you will see a natural state of health and equilibrium establish itself in the form of an actualized human being. This is especially important to understand when it comes to the root chakra, because it is so out of alignment for people here on this earth. And also, this concept of it being too open is particularly pervasive in the spiritual field. This is what I mean by that. There are a great many people who will tell you that there are people that are too rooted in the physical that they're way, way, way too grounded in their root chakra. This is actually not the case. When you're looking at these individuals that are so intensely rooted in the physical, there's something specific that's happening there. These people cling to the physical and to the patterns of their people because they too have insecure belonging and safety. Their belonging and safety and their needs being met was made conditional upon not evolving. This is what Shadow Tribe is all about. Before we get into how to bring your root chakra into a state of alignment, I have to give you a little bit of a warning here about the root chakra and bringing it into alignment. And it's this. There's nothing more obnoxious than working directly on the evolving or alignment of your root chakra. The reason is this. Your root chakra is primarily concerned with survival. This means if you have closed it, you have closed it because survival was threatened in the physical reality. Therefore, what happens when you go to try to open your root chakra? You confront all of the blockages you have to belonging, all of the blockages you have to actually rooting in the physical, all of the unsafety issues that caused you to close it in the first place. With a great many of these other chakras, even though you will see this happen where you confront whatever blockage is in the way, in general, to open a chakra feels good. This is not going to be the case when you start to open your root chakra. Instead, it's going to feel a bit like you're wading into sharky waters. You can use the resistance you feel or the fearful emotions that arise to do the completion process, which will not only cause healing, but will also help the chakra to come into alignment. To learn how to do this, pick up a copy of my book titled The Completion Process. All this being said, how do you open the root chakra and bring it into a state of alignment? First and foremost, accept that you have needs. <laughs> I have to mention this for a very important reason. Most of you who are watching this video are very interested in spiritual methodology. The spiritual field is primarily full of one type of human being, a type of human being whose most basic needs, especially emotional ones, were not met by people, and so you turned your focus to the non-physical. Therefore, it's much safer to deny needs or to figure out how to transcend them, isn't it? Only one problem remains. You can't actually do that.
Many of these needs you can't not have are physical ones like food, shelter, water, rest, and affection. Many of them are non-physical, such as a sense of safety, a feeling of belonging, connection, companionship, understanding, and significance, etc., etc. No matter what you have been told by people who make your needs wrong because they don't actually want to meet those needs, you can't unneed what you need. Don't even try. Become an expert on meeting these needs directly instead. To help with this step, watch my video titled, Meet Your Needs. To start this process, ask yourself in any given situation. What do I need to feel, and then fill in the blank with whatever it is? What do I need to feel supported? Answer the question. What do I need to feel connected? What do I need to feel understanding? What do I need to feel nourished? To further understand the importance of doing this, watch my video titled, You Can't Heal Yourself Out of a Desire. It's important to note that self-reliance is something that people usually associate with the root chakra, and yet again, this couldn't be any further from the truth. The form of self-empowerment that comes with the root chakra is the knowing that you actually do have the capacity to find the people, places, and things that do meet your needs. Not that you have the capacity to meet all your needs yourself. People who struggle with the root chakra do not need to learn independence. They really, really don't, and I need you to get this through, because so many people are focused on this when it comes to the root chakra, and it's just going to lead you backwards. What they do need to focus on is this, that they do need people, and to find these people who are compatible to them and with whom they can build symbiotic, mutually nourishing, and mutually empowering relationships with. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that meet your needs means you're all alone to fend for yourself and need to learn to be okay with it. To understand more, watch my video titled Dependence vs. Independence. In order to bring your root chakra into alignment, you need to understand a very basic premise about humans. And what I'm about to tell you will sound simple, but will transform the way you understand safety. A human being's sense of safety, or a living being's sense of safety beyond humans, is primarily about the capacity to believe that one can reliably get one's needs met. Two, if you have issues with the root chakra, safe and secure relationships is your point of trauma. This means become an expert on how to have fulfilling and safe relationships. You must begin to develop these safe and secure relationships where you do belong in your current life, in the here and now, and in reality. To help with this step, watch my videos titled How to Have a Safe Relationship, What is Love, The Hidden Truth About Dysfunctional Relationships, and Trust. What is trust and how to build trust in relationships? To be quite honest with you, every relationship video I have ever done since the beginning of my career is going to help you with this step. The more you understand relationships, the easier it's going to be for you to put yourself in the right situations with people who are truly compatible, to gravitate away from people who are not actually capable of safe relationships at this current moment in time, to ground yourself in social connections that are truly and genuinely right for you. Three. Don't, I repeat, don't try to get rid of your fear, bulldoze your fear, or deny your fear, or be brave despite it. The reality is, if you're physically incarnated, you have fear. It's a brilliant idea to have fear, otherwise you wouldn't survive long on this planet in general. But when fear arises, you need to take loving care of it, instead of the plentiful, terrible ways you have been taught to deal with fear. Fear is primitive and instinctual energy. Now what do we know about the root chakra? It's all about instincts. Here's the thing, yet again, the spiritual field is off base because the focus in spiritual communities is to transcend your humanness. It's to transcend instinctual energies, including fear. It's to deny them. It's to disown them. And we couldn't be doing anything worse. The actual goal is to integrate these instinctual energies. That means you're not trying to become fearless. You're trying to integrate your own fear. In order to learn what to do with fear and these more instinctual energies, read my book titled The Anatomy of Loneliness, How to Find Your Way Back to Connection, and pay special attention to the entire section on fear. You may also benefit by watching my videos titled How to Stop Worrying and How to Stop Expecting the Worst, Catastrophizing. 4. The root chakra is influenced by the color red, 
but also by the colors black, brown, and gray. That being said, people who have issues with the root chakra tend not to gravitate towards these energies. In fact, they tend to gravitate towards the color blue, because of its primarily soothing effect. They also gravitate towards the color green, because it has a tendency to create a feeling of connection and belonging. If you have an issue with your root chakra, you can stimulate it by using the color red, by using the color black, brown, or gray. However, using any color that has the greatest effect in terms of giving you a sense of security or safety or belonging is going to be the best color to use when it comes to using colors to influence your root chakra. Five, you can stimulate it with sounds. You can find binaural beats on the internet that are designed specifically for the root chakra. You can expose yourself to crystal bowl healing, specifically designed for the root chakra. You can also stick with thousands of years of toning tradition. To do this, you can sit in meditation. And the best sounds to use, traditionally, are lam or ooh. Now, the people who perhaps make the very best root chakra sound are Tibetan monks, so you can even look up their chanting and either follow along or allow them to create that resonant tone within your body. What you're looking for with toning is to have, relative to the root chakra, your pelvic floor be what is vibrated by that toning. You can also listen to music that stimulates your root chakra. Now I'm going to throw in a little bit of a tidbit which might make some of you laugh. The real reason that I absolutely love rap music, besides the fact that it's an incredible expression of poetry, is that rap and hip-hop music is in fact the most stimulating music for the root chakra that I've found. Sometimes it's even more stimulating than the specific tones created specifically for the root chakra. <laughs> Six, get into your body, connect with your body, and exercise. This chakra is the one that is the most affected by physical movement, by all kinds of exercise. It is most stimulated by strength exercises and vigorous exercise that really gets the circulation moving. Also, the root chakra is incredibly responsive to movement meditation, including disciplines like yoga and qigong and tai chi. And in case you're in the mood for some therapy, the therapy that most let's say, brings this chakra into alignment, is somatic therapy. Seven, learn how to receive and alter your perspective about abundance. When people have abundance issues and get into a mentality of scarcity, it always affects your root chakra and brings it out of alignment. And it being out of alignment kind of acts like a vicious cycle where it increases your mentality around scarcity. When this happens, not only do we have a limited view of resources in the overall universe, we tend to go to the places and the people where we actually can't get our needs met. Even when there's somebody standing right there who actually can meet that need and would love to. We also don't tend to receive well when people come into our life experience that can meet those needs and when we're in situations that can meet needs. To understand more about this, watch my video titled How to Receive. Eight. Do breathwork and breathing exercises. Breathwork is a very interesting thing because breath is like a bridge between the physical and non-physical. Therefore, breathwork has every bit as much capacity to bring somebody who is too grounded in the physical into the non-physical as it does to bring people who are too identified with the non-physical into the physical. When people are not connected to physicality because they feel so insecure and unsafe, the first thing you will notice is shallow breathing. This shallow breathing or cessation of breath is in fact a subconscious rejection of life itself. 9. Ground yourself. Do things like walking barefoot on the earth, listening to grounding music, taking salt baths, doing breathing exercises, spending time around grounded individuals. For more information about how to do this, you can watch my video titled How to Ground Yourself, all about grounding. 10. Connect to the earth and connect your body to the earth when you are doing that. This means spend time in nature. We've already mentioned walking barefoot on the earth, but here's the thing I need you to do when you're out with the earth. Actually be grounded in the somatic sensations that are occurring when you're out there. Pay attention to the textures, the sensations, the smells, the tastes, the sights, the sounds. 11. Use herbs and essential oils to assist this chakra to come into a state of alignment. I'm going to give you a list of what I consider to be the ones that I notice affect the chakra the very most. My top picks 
are burdock, redwood, cedar, spruce tree, sandalwood, clove, peppercorn, vetiver, lotus flower, cinnamon, chamomile, St. John's wort, paprika, lavender, patchouli, myrrh, benzoin, cypress, and juniper. 12. Eat foods that specifically assist this root chakra. I'm going to give you a list of the ones that I notice have the greatest effect in all people on the root chakra. Starting with beets, <laughs> rhubarb, tomato, red potato, red cabbage, root vegetables, radish, red peppers, protein-rich foods, pepper, cinnamon, nuts, cherries, pomegranates, red apples, watermelon, and beans. 13. Bring certain mineral energies into your life. Now the thing is, the root chakra is so influenced by mineral energies that to not use mineral energies with the alignment of the root chakra would be remiss. Like always, I'm going to give you my opinion on what I have seen creates the greatest effect in all physical humans for the root chakra specifically. The primary is red jasper, followed by bloodstone. Other amazing stones are rhodonite, brown aragonite, black tourmaline, turquoise, smoky quartz, petrified wood, fossils, hematite, starlite, otherwise known as the fairy cross, garnet, red barrel, ruby, red coral, and agate, especially crazy lace agate, brown agate, and laguna agate. Don't forget that just like we talked about with the colors, even though there are specific stones that may be related by most people to the root chakra, any stone that increases your overall sense of security, stability, soothing, is going to have greater effect on the root chakra than another that might typically be associated specifically with the root chakra. By intentionally doing things that open your root chakra and bring it into a state of alignment, what you are really doing is opening to your physical life. You are rooting in what you chose for this life experience. By doing that, you're actually rooting yourself in your purpose, your purpose for even being here in the first place, and your place within the grand scheme of things along with it. You will be integrating your physical body with your non-physical essence. You will plant your roots on the earth and in social groups where you truly belong and are truly wanted. Along with healing the patterns of ancestral trauma, you will be developing safe relationships and establish a life where your needs are reliably met. Opening your root chakra enables you to build a foundation upon which the other energy centers can actually function. Doing this will provide the necessary conditions for you to evolve and expand beyond what you ever imagined you could. Have a good week. <laughs>